it is a small medium effect and my judgment of this is it's not very meaningful because we would like uh, when it comes to interest in politics we would like people to uh, have more on the larger side of effect and that's the reason why is because uh, uh, ultimately we would like people uh, becoming more um, active in their political life and voting and and doing things to influence policies and if you only see a small effect then they're not really motivated and inspired that's at least how i see things and as long as you're able to rationalize uh, why the effect size is meaningful and not meaningful of course if it's a large effect size it's more likely to be meaningful unless you can really give a good argument saying that even though it's a large effect size is not meaningful and one of the ways in which you can do that is by looking also at the confidence intervals now remember from last time we talked if one portion of the confidence interval crosses zero then we have some indication that there is uh, not a meaningful effect size or uh, statistically significance is not uh, there so in this case we would retain the null so if we were to get something like like in this case our confidence interval is going to be negative 0.641 comma 0 0.020 negative now that doesn't cross the zero. They're all like on this side. So zero is right here and negative point zero two zero is right here. And then negative point six four one is right here. So the lower end of the confidence interval is right here and the upper end is right here. So this is the range of the effect size is between point, uh, negative 0 0.641 and uh, negative 0 0.020. But if it crosses this, let's say that this uh, value is not negative 0 0.020 and rather it is positive 0 0.020. Then we have some indication that uh, we would retain the null. There's not a significant differences be difference between groups and uh, the effect size is not meaningful. And in this case, what we're doing is we would write it, we would draw a confidence interval that crosses the zero point. And in this case, what we have here is 0 0.0 or 0 0.020 on the positive side. So you could say something like if it crosses a zero, you can say zero passes between negative 0.641 and positive 0 0.020, which it crosses the upper bounds. Therefore, we retain the null hypothesis because there's not a significant difference between groups. Uh, and so something like that but since it does not cross to zero then we can say that it is meaningful and it is a small meaning effect but the range is from almost zero to about a uh, medium large effect size so it does have a wide range here and I, I will mention that and that could be another argument you can make about the meaningfulness of the effect size all right do we reject or retain the null hypothesis why so in this case, you would also look at the confidence interval if it crosses to zero. These both are in the negative. If these were both in the positive, that's fine. If these are both in the negative, that's fine. But if one is negative and one is positive, then that gives us one indication that uh, we do not have a statistically significant difference between groups. But what we see here is that they stay in the negative the confidence interval as well as the p-value. So in this case, p equals 0 0.037. And as we know that we set our alpha 0 0.05, so p is less than 0 
Therefore, we reject the null hypothesis. So we can say based on our, our p value, we will reject the null hypothesis. And then maybe comma p is less than 0 0.05. But actually, in this case, you don't write less than 0 0.05. You write p equals 0 0.037. So it's there. And it's close to 0 0.05. But there's, there's no such thing as close to 0 0.05. It's either less than 0 0.05 or not. I mean, there's only two options there. All right, so now that we have this information here, we're going to go in ahead and put this into this uh, APA format. So this is in the walkthrough. So you find it at the um, later stages of the walkthrough. So repeated measures t-test was conducted compared to interests and politics before and after students enrolled in political science class. There was a... difference between ratings of students' as, uh, political science prior to taking the class. And as we see here, the mean is 2.62. And then the standard deviation is going to be uh, 1.25. Is rounding up 1.25, and then after the class, it's post test. The mean is 3.02, and then the standard deviation is 1. Point, uh, we'll round this up 1.3. So we're just rounding that up to uh, 1.3, and I guess you can write 1.30. Now this area right here is degrees of freedom. And for a paired sample t-test, we only have, uh, it's going to be n minus 1. And you can also find it right here. So if I'm to move this over, degrees of freedom is right there. So that's going to be 41. And then the t statistic is negative 2.15. And then the p-value, p equals 0 0.037. And then we have the point estimate. That is your effect size is 0.33. And it doesn't matter if it's positive or negative. It's an absolute value. And then we have the confidence interval. Uh, I, th I think that you can use either this one or, uh, yeah, let's go ahead and use this one because I, I think that we're, we're talking about the effect size here and we can use the confidence interval, but really you can use this one as well because we're looking at the difference interval of the difference, confidence interval of the difference. Um, but you can use either one as long as you are able to kind of explain or understand the difference between uh, these two. And this is just the uh, confidence interval for the effect size right here that I'm writing down. We can equally write down the confidence interval for the difference which is 0.738 to 0.024. And that would be the mean difference between the pre and post. All right, so based on the p-value in your output, is your decision supported? And you should be able to uh, answer that question with all this information that we provided for this assignment. And so uh, you can rewrite some information right here and put it into question five. I'm going to leave this up to you to answer it and think about it. This is more sort of like a critical thinking task. And so um, hopefully this is helpful. One thing I want to do before I end this is give you sort of an example comparing a paired sample t-test to a, an independent sample t-test. So let's say what I did was instead of um, testing the same participants twice, 
pre and post, I decide to divide the group uh, into those that did not receive the treatment and those that did receive the treatment, which is one. And I just coded this as uh, did not watch the debate and did watch the debate. And I guess I could rename this as did not receive the treatment. And then one as did receive the treatment condition. All right, so that's added. And I'm gonna go into here. And what I'm gonna be doing is I wanna see if there's, this, these are the same exact scores. Uh, this is pre and this is post, but I've separated, separated them into two groups. And so all the pre here, as you can see here, is listed from one to 41 here, or 42 here. And then all the posts is listed from 42 all the way down to uh, 84. 43 all the way down to 84. And well, I'm just gonna see if if I get a different uh, result when I use an independent sample t-test. So let me go ahead and start from the beginning. So here's our outcome, which is intention to uh, vote. And then our group and variable is, we define it as zero and one did not receive the treatment condition and did receive the treatment condition. Then we're gonna press continue and press okay. And what we see here, I'll delete this over, all right. We see the exact same means, 2.64, 3.02, as we saw in the paired samples uh, t-test. But the difference is the standard deviation is the same as well. Wait a second, yeah. Just about the same here as we see here. What is different is we have degrees of freedom, right? So we have 84 participants in this example. And we're minusing it by two, minus two and it gives us 82 degrees of freedom. That's different here. The other thing that's different is we have our p-value right here. p is equal to 0.174. Well, that's interesting. And our confidence intervals is different. And our point estimate is more or less the same we got 0.3, but in, in the other condition here, when we used a paired, we got 0.33. So we have uh, a smaller effect size here. And so I, I think the, the point I'm trying to get, okay, yeah, it's right here. The point I'm trying to bring to you is that you have less power in a independent sample t-test and more uh, error that's going to occur. So it's harder for you to uh, see a difference if a difference actually exists between these uh, two conditions. And as you see here, because we have two groups of individuals or two groups, uh, they're gonna have all these differences that sort of compound in, in, this, in the error effect, which may um, hide differences that you that may in fact be between these groups. So in this case, we would say, well, there is no differences between the groups. P is equal to 0.174. Clearly, um, the treatment did not have an effect on whether or not somebody is interested in voting or has an intent to vote. But that's the magic or the the, uh, uh, the advantage of a paired sample t-test is you can use the same group of participants in the pre and post test conditions, as well as save when it comes to money, you don't need a, as large of a sample, 
and time and you improve your power and precision in your results. Thank you so, so much for listening and I'll talk to you soon.